Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is my FTT 210 uh, week six. However, it's the week three or part three of the muzzle loader lab. Uh, so this week we're going to be installing and inletting the trigger as well as inletting the trigger guard and then shaping the rear of the stock. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the inletting portion. Uh, it's gonna be very similar to last week. We're gonna probably fast forward through most of that and then we'll head out to the shop to do the shaping on the rear of the stock and that'll be it for this week all right thanks I've been fumbling with this for oh, an hour or so, and I realized a few things. One, the book and the instructions say don't mess with your trigger because it comes already uh, configured in, you know, whatever from the factory. That was 100% not true for me. You sit on a throne of lies. Okay, so this uh, mechanism right here, when it was up, was real loose and floppy, and uh, it didn't have a lot of upward force. And no matter how many times I put it in, I couldn't get it to fall the hammer. So um, I messed around with this screw right here on the bottom. There's a tiny little, tiny little flathead screw there, and that allowed it. That really tightened this up. Um, it had a little bit more spring to that, to this uh, first trigger. Uh, to the lock so um, with that being the case uh, as much as it says don't don't mess with the trigger mess with the trigger if you have to uh, second thing I made a mistake when I first started inletting the bottom and I inlet what was easy so basically I set the trigger in and I was like, oh, it needs a little bit of space in the front let's just get rid of some of that space in the front and so I inlet the front and then realized that actually the trigger needed to go back a little bit in order to function properly. So, so I ended up having to re-inlet the back. Luckily, this is all covered up by the guard, uh, but just be aware, um, you do need to do that. Uh, lastly, there's a little shelf inside of here that I've now gotten rid of. There's a little shelf that can hinder your trigger from going all the way down. You just kind of have to slide your blade along the side here and kind of get rid of that little machine shelf that's there that way the it can sit all the way down otherwise it kind of teeter totters on that center piece right there so just make sure you get that shelf out of there most likely you're gonna have to inlet backwards not forwards and adjust the trigger if you have to now that I've got this I'll put the screw in I'll get a drill there's a spot right here that you need to drill. The instructions do not specify which screw to use, but there's one oddball screw compared to the other two that match. Um, I know the two brass ones go to the nose cap. So I'm gonna go through the instructions real quick and try and figure out what the other two that match go to, but my guess is, is it's the slightly longer screw that goes to the back of the trigger assembly. So if you're doing this, I'm, I, I'll correct this in this video if this is not the screw, but this is my guess is this is a screw. So once I get this drilled screwed, then we'll move on and I'll start doing this. So. I'm gonna use this little guy. And again, what I did was holding it up, 
to see how much of the screw I can see behind it. Which I don't know. You can see all the threads, which means it'll get a good grip through that. So if it feels like it's creaking a little bit or cracking a little bit too, you know, I might go a little bit bigger, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be the size that we need. So I will drill that uh, with this little drill bit and then start inletting this. That was the right screw. And if I would have thought about it for two seconds, I would have figured out that the other two screws are for this. So, um, just to give you peace of mind, we'll cock this. Oops. Let's go ahead and... Okay, so we'll cock it. And then... Works. So, that's how it works, by the way. You do that. Cock it. So, we're good there. This has a really good fit in the front and a really not good fit in the back, but we're close. Uh, I'll not lie to you that being a metal worker, my initial instinct was to heat this up and bend it a little bit, but I won't do that. I'll do what the book said and just do this little part right here. We're out at the shop. Um, our trigger guard is fully inlet. I have yet to drill it. So, trigger guard is installed and our trigger's installed. Uh, we can, so everything's functional here. So. We're out in the garage because we're going to cheat a little bit when it comes to shaping this. Um, you know, they talk about ways to do this and, you know, you can use rasps. That's a half round and uh, here's another one. So you can use rasps. Uh, you could use a draw file. That's what this is. It's just a forged draw file out of a, uh, a horseshoe rasp, you can kind of see the stuff there. So so basically this is just for draw filing, or draw, draw, it's a draw knife. Nailed it. So, um, I thought about doing that, the draw knife, um, but I'm afraid of getting too big of a chunk. That's more for like debarking a tree for making log furniture or something. So, I thought about it a lot, and I am going to cheat and use power tools. You know, men, we want a job done right, and we want it done quick. What do we need? More power! Darn right, more power. We're going to go with this, which is a Bauer uh, Harbor Freight Orbital Sander. Uh, we're going to use some grits. We've got some 60 grit, 80 grit. We have some 120 and some 220. So we will take this wood up to 220 and uh, simultaneously be kind of working the brass that's overlapping as well as the wood. Now, one thing to consider when you're working with sanding both brass and wood at the same time, the brass is harder than the wood. So what could end up happening is while you're sanding, if you're not using something that's real hard, like this kind of squishy, it's pretty hard though, probably will work. Uh, 
if you're like if you're using your fingers or you're using something that has a softer base than this one does, uh, what'll happen is the wood will kind of wear away faster than the brass and all of your brass will kind of hump up, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'll be honest with you, the biggest thing I'm worried about is not nicking the brass while I'm sanding because uh, again, I can clean that up. What I'm afraid of is accidentally nicking the screw heads while I'm doing this. So I wanna be really careful with the screw head, so. For this back piece, I am not going to file it by hand. I'm going to put it on a belt sander. Um, I have a two by 72 belt sander that I use for knife making. And I'm just gonna touch it on there and basically clean it right back up. And I'll show you videos of all of that. So with that being said, I'm gonna lay down a towel here and uh, put it in fast motion and you can enjoy the show. Just wanted to give you an update and see where we're at. So uh, basically we've got the whole wood is removed from around all that. We just have this little lip right there at the top that we got to get rid of. Uh, the bottom is lined up. So real clean and smooth there. Um, everything looks real good with the inletting. Uh, so all we have left is this little bit right here. And then we'll step up the grits and kind of get it a little cleaner and kind of fix up that brass a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and step up the grit now actually. So this is a two by 72 belt grinder. I have a 240, a worn 240 grit belt on there. It's real smooth. And uh, I'll kick it on here in a second. And all we're going to do is basically come in. I'm gonna come in at this angle and basically just flatten that down to the brass that's there. So now that we have that down to flush with this, this is flush all the way across. This can be fixed up with files and sanding. So let's go ahead and move back over and we'll start stepping it up the grits. Here while we got it close, you can see the wood just from the sanding.
the stock is now perfectly, uh, there you can see. Perfectly smooth with it. The only thing is I gotta clean up the uh, orbital scratches. They're currently at a 220. So I should be fine going to like a 300 and then a 400. Um, you know, the book says don't go past, I think it says 300 or whatever for uh, your brass. But uh, just to clean this up, but I'm telling you, I'm super smooth. Um, and now we shouldn't have any problems when we go back next week for sanding this all out um, to get that same kind of finish there. I mean, this is, there's there's literally, I can't feel the difference between the brass and the wood when I run my finger across, it's perfectly even. Uh, and that comes from doing the two at the same time, so. Here is the finished product after fixing the brass. Uh, you still can't feel the difference between the wood and the brass. 
the brass is all cleaned up. It's very nicely married up here at the bottom. And this side, same thing. Everything feels real smooth. Nice connections. Overall, I'd say that was a resounding success, varying from the, uh, from the instructions a little bit. Not to mention, I'm now down to a 220 on my wood already for most of this part, so there's a lot less sanding to do when I get to this part, so. That's the end of week three of the muzzleloader build and week six of the class. Today we, or this week rather, we installed the trigger and inlet the trigger. We inlet the trigger guard, uh, which is all done real nicely, looks good. And then we um, basically cleaned up this whole part of the stock, took down all the extra meat. We had extra quarter of an inch of wood here and around the sides we had some extra brass too. Um, I used an orbital sander. It's 2023, we've passed the industrial revolution. So, you know, in my opinion, if you don't have to use hand tools, you don't. So I don't regret it. I think it turned out great. I think the finish on it looks really fantastic. You know, the only drawback is that you have to, um, you have to go back over it with uh, wet sanding to get rid of the orbital sanding marks. But overall, you know, I mean, the results speak for themselves. So with that being said, that completes my week and uh, we'll see you back next week.